Mike here from Grinding Gears Garage. This is part two of our Yamaha Blaster Teardown. Uh, we got the motor over here on the bench. Part one, which I'll put the link right here, we removed the motor from the quad. So now we're going to get ready and do a rebuild. Uh, we did a compression test on it and a leak down test and both failed. Our compression wasn't fantastic. It was 120 PSI. Should be a lot higher. Should be around 150. So we're going to go ahead and do a top end rebuild, fresh piston, fresh hone, and we're doing a ga gasket set. When we did a leak down test, we had a leak underneath here. You can't really see where it could have been coming from. We're gonna roll the motor over here. See if we could see where our air leak was coming from. It was between the cases where they'd meet. I think it's just a mark for when the motor was torn down from before and it was kind of oh there it is right there bottom of this thing is filthy we're going to clean all this mud off as you can see right here there's a separation in the case probably wasn't enough yama bond applied so we're going to tear her down split the cases do a full rebuild hopefully she'll be back better than she was before obviously when we do a full rebuild we're going to do a leak down test on the bench before we install it in the bike. Do a compression test once we have it <clears throat> installed as well, just to give us some good numbers so we know where we're starting with. Uh, compression does help you with your jetting as well. Higher compression, you need a little bit more fuel. So follow along today. We're going to tear down our motor and see what we're working with. So first things first, we popped our spark plug out of our blaster 13 sixteenths. And set it off to the side. One thing we like to use on all of our projects as we tear them down is plastic baggies. We just buy cheap generic sandwich bags from our locally, local grocery store. Keep them on hand. We have a Sharpie as well. We write on the bag what it is, what it pertains to. Uh, we'll separate it all out, set it in a box. So when we go to reinstall everything, it's all labeled. We know what everything goes to so we're not guessing what bolts go where. Uh, we also make a note where longer bolts go and stuff like that. So we took our 13 millimeter, zipped off our dome bolt and used a screwdriver or a pry bar just to apply a little pressure. Be careful, it's only cast. These fins will crack. So we pulled our dome off. As you can see, running a little rich, a little black. And we got some piston, some bore wear. Trying to get a good shot. And you can see here, Got some wear here on the bore. It's not looking too pretty. So we're definitely going to need a new piston. <clears throat> so now we have our dome off. We're going to take our 12 millimeter. There's four bolts. One here, one here. Pretty much the four corners. We're going to loosen them up and we're going to pull our cylinder off. Take a closer look at it off of the uh, engine. As you can see, we have some nice movement probably shouldn't be there so we may need a crank too so we're going to break this all down and see what we're working with so we're going to show you guys top dead center as you can see we got some side to side and some just all around movement it's shot junk so we're going to pull the bore see what she looks like on the inside all right so we got our bolts out of the sides all four we used a pry bar again to try and catch this lip here to pull the head or the cylinder I should say and we loosen it up and there she goes set it off to the side and survey the damage so obviously you're gonna have some slop back and forth I don't believe that is good right there we also have a little not too much front and back, but a lot side to side. I'm going to talk to some people, see what that should be, if that's good or not. But as you can see, we got a lot of blow by here on our piston and in the cylinder. A lot all the way around. There's the cylinder, as you can see, there's some blow by marks on the sleeve. 
we're gonna see, measure this, see where we're at with our bore, see if it's stock bore, if it's been bored out or not. We may be able to go with 10 thousandths bore on it and then we can uh, just put a bigger piston in it, slightly bigger. Go ten, maybe 10 thousandths bigger. So we're gonna bust out the dial calipers, measure our bore and see where we're at. So we bust out our dial calipers. This is a real crude way to measure bore. Should use a set of uh, bore gauges but we're waiting on ours to come in. We ordered a set. So we measured 2.650 on our bore, which works out to be, let's see. So we found this list online, 0.7, uh, oh, sorry, let me back up. That converts to 67.3 millimeters. So that puts us right around 50 thousandths bore. But that gives us room to go to 60 thousandths bore, which is 60 thousandths over our stock bore, which will put us at a uh, 204 to 215 cc motor. So we need to talk to some people, see if we can uh, bore this out bigger. Uh, we did pick up some adjustable hones, so we'll be able to do the boring in-house, but obviously we need to buy a new piston, because this one is shot. So we're going to pull the wrist pins, which are right here. I'm going to show you guys a little trick on how to do that. And our piston and cylinder will be off and we can focus on breaking down the bottom end. So our trick for removing wrist pins is we took a small screwdriver here and we just insert it into the wrist clip slot and we just rotate the wrist pin around until we can grab a hold of it. You can see it's, it's accessible right there. So we have this little pair of needle nose pliers. Just go ahead and reach in there. And twist. It didn't work on that one. It's tough to do with one hand and film. There we go. Hit and grab. There we go. Now we actually bent this one pulling it out, but we're gonna get new ones with our new piston. This one came out flawlessly. Uh, we may be able to bend this back if we want to reuse it. Then we're gonna just push take our screwdriver. Just the wrist pin should just push out. Oh, looks like we're gonna have to get a little aggressive with this one. It's a lot of gunk built up inside the piston, so this bad boy may not want to pop out as easy as we're used to. We're gonna set the tripod up and remove our wrist pin. It's a little bit more aggressive than we like to be on these things, but since we're replacing the whole piston and wrist pin, we're just taking a hammer, a screwdriver, tapping it on out of there. And there is our removed piston. You can see all the blow-by right here, all the way around the cylinder. It's really bad on this side here. So this thing's pretty much junk. I'm going to put it on the shelf as a museum piece, pretty much. So now we got that removed. This is your wrist pin bearing. Ours is still in decent shape. It's not fantastic, but I've seen worse. So we got our five screws out of our stator cover. Uh, one thing that we really hate about used bikes is this is what was holding in our stator cover. We have a regular bolt, an Allen head, and three Phillips. So you're gonna run into a lot of different things on a used bike, and one of them is mixed match hardware. A lot of people will lose bolts, they just grab whatever. So we're gonna take one of these down to the hardware store, get five matching ones so it's all the same. It's a little bit of a pet peeve I have. I like everything to match and look identical. So this is just your stator and flywheel cover. So, as you can see, it's pretty dirty. There is a gasket here, but ours is pretty bad shape. All right, so we have our, our camera died, sorry about that, but we took our cover off. This is our flywheel, magneto, and the stator on the inside. So 17 millimeter, we zing this off with our impact. I'm gonna set that off to the side. And then we use two small screwdrivers to pull out, there's a little spacer in there, which, Try and pull that back out. Go there. So just grab our 
two little screwdrivers. There we go. Set those off to the side. And you're gonna need a flywheel puller. It's a 27 millimeter. Uh, your threads are reverse on the flywheel. So just remember that. You're gonna thread that in all the way. Run your caging bolt down against and your flywheel will pop right out. We pulled ours already. We thought the camera was filming, so sorry you guys missed all the excitement. Just gonna thread it in. It's gonna pull the flywheel off of the crankshaft, which is tapered. There we go. As you can see, ours is pretty dirty. We're gonna clean up the magneto pickups so it runs a little bit better. This is your stator in here. This is your pickup. As you can see, it's pretty dirty. Crankshaft is tapered as always. There is a Woodruff key that keeps your flywheel centered so that the timing is set. So we're gonna take a Phillips screwdriver, pop out these two bolts, pull our magneto out, and we're also going to take off our sprocket. It looks like we need a new one. It's starting to wear on the shaft and the sprocket itself. So we're gonna buy a new one of them. Uh, we're just going to take the, the uh, Fly the, 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 the stator out, pull the wiring out with it, set it off to the side. And we're going to flip the engine over and start taking apart the that side and the clutch, your drive gears, and then once that's done, we'll be able to get into the transmission and the fun parts of the engine. So we have our stator off to the side. Looks like our crank seal is leaking as well. It's wet, it smells like uh, oil and gas. So we have a new seal kit. We're gonna replace these seals as well. This side of the motor is what bolts to the other half. You can see all these Phillips head bolts here. That's what holds this case half to the other case half. Uh, we're gonna focus on this one last. We are going to flip it over, go ahead and take the clutch out and disassemble that side of the motor first. All right, so we flipped the motor over. We took our kicker off. Uh, it's a 19 millimeter to pop the nut off. Kicker should just slide right off. We took out these four Phillips screws right here. And we'll take this cover off. This takes you to your oil pump. Ours was deleted the half-assed way. They just filled the hose in with epoxy. The pump is still here. You're gonna use another Phillips to remove those two screws pump slides right off. We are actually going to buy a delete kit and totally delete this whole unit from the motor because it's not used anymore. We are doing a uh, self mixing. We are doing our own mixing for our <coughs> uh, two stroke oil. So you're gonna take your eight millimeter. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's eight bolts all the way around. That'll take off your clutch cover. We'll go ahead and take our clutch out. So we got all our bolts removed. As you can see, they're different sizes. So just keep track of where the longer ones. Uh, these two right here came from here and over here. So just make sure you keep track of that. So we're gonna pull our cover off. <coughs> As you can see, this is your injection pump gear here. We're gonna remove all of that. Uh, if you don't remove the plastic gear, you can potentially run into an issue with it blowing apart and damaging the internals of the engine. So we're gonna buy a block off kit that covers, remove this whole shaft, covers everything up, looks real clean. So we're gonna set this off to the side. And here's our internals of the engine. We got our clutch here, clutch basket. We have our primary gear right here, off the motor, kick starter with the spring, our shift fork, and a few other transmission components underneath the clutch basket. So first things first, pop our clutch, clutch basket off. We're gonna inspect everything, see how it looks. We're gonna go from there. All right, so we're getting ready to take our clutch basket off. We have our eight millimeter on our impact, help us zing these bolts out real fast. Uh, you can use a screwdriver. Uh, you may fight yourself a little bit. We got a 10 millimeter, it looks like, right in the middle. There we go. Hands a little oily, tough to take apart. So we're just gonna take a look at our surface here. It's not really blued at all. There's still some meat left to this clutch. You may replace it depending on price. I'm gonna take a look at a clutch kit for it. But when you take a clutch apart, we've talked about this before, you wanna make sure you keep your 
mating surfaces matched up. You don't want to remove and mix everything up. Your clutch material mates with the metal friction discs. If you mix it up, you'll run into some issues. We're going to take that whole stack apart then, inspect each unit, see what it looks like. Our clutch basket is actually in phenomenal shape. If you look right here, there's no any wear on our fingers here. Normally when it wears, you get nice little notches from the clutch hammering back and forth. So we're good there. Take that part and set it aside. Then we're going to take a screwdriver here. We got to bend our tab over and remove the nut for our clutch basket. You'll be very careful when doing this so you don't damage anything. Uh, we're going to grab our screwdriver. We're going to go ahead and remove the inner part of our basket. And then the outer part should remove right with it. So we rolled our washer over. We got our 22 millimeter on our impact. There we go. Just use a screwdriver inside the basket to keep push against these little veins right here. Keep it from spinning. Don't need a whole lot of pressure. Take your alignment plate off. The basket pops right off. Set that off to the side. Ah, there we go. You have a locking washer in there. What it does is when it sits in there, you rotate a half a turn or half a hole. That way your basket can't fall out. Push that off. There we go. Clutch basket's off. You can set this off to the side. And we're going to dive into the larger internals of the motor and the transmission. This is where the fun begins. This is where you don't want to lose your place. Make sure when you're pulling apart you keep track. These two washers came off the, the bottom side of our basket. They were sitting on there just like that. You want to make sure you keep track of where all this stuff comes from. So we had another one of those plates here. We had to knock it down to remove. Uh, we used a 19 millimeter to loosen up both of these nuts. This is where labeling the bags becomes very, very important. So this right here is your main drive right off your crankshaft, as you can see. We're going to remove our gears here. Don't forget the keyway as well. So we're going to set these in a bag with the nut so we know what, exactly what they go to, where they belong in the motor. Slowly walk it off the shaft. There we go. There may be the counterbalance for the crank. There is timing marks here and on the main gear. So we're going to line them back up when we reinstall the motor to keep the counterbalance in sync with the crank. And then we got your kicker gear here. Pops right out. Whole shaft removed as one. Grab our snap ring pliers. We're going to remove this gear right here. There are no timing marks on this. This is your direct drive into your transmission, either from your kicker or on the back side of your clutch. That gear right there. Pop this gear off. Like I mentioned before, pay attention to the washers. There was one top and bottom on this one. This side up here was facing up. <clears throat> so we have one on the bottom, one on the top with our snap ring. We're going to put these in a baggie so we don't lose them. There's also another snap ring on the shaft right there. We're going to pull that one off. That way when we pull our case apart, it doesn't interfere. Two things we forgot to mention. Inside of your shaft for your clutch, this little rod sits. This is what that nut was on. Well, inside of the shaft is this little shaft, and there is a ball bearing between the two, just like so. So make sure you set this aside. Don't lose this, especially the ball bearing. You'll have a very hard time putting everything back together without the shaft. It, it's uh, what is used to push your clutch in and out. So all of the screws around your case or Phillips. We're using our hand impact again. Makes bracing, breaking these things loose as painless as possible. 
So we're splitting our cases. We got all of our bolts out. We just picked this up the other week. It's a Tusk crankcase splitter. It's a lot better than using a screwdriver to hammer in between your cases to split it. Uh, we installed our supplied bolts with our splitter. It comes with, let's see here, six or eight millimeter all thread. You can honestly make this work for anything. You can make your own all thread uh, spacers. We used a six millimeter, ran them into our flywheel cover, and then we put our <coughs> nut on our crank so we don't damage the end of it. Uses a 17 millimeter. We're gonna go ahead and finish pulling this. Honestly, the only disadvantage is you're you're applying pressure pretty much just to the flywheel flywheel case, so it's kind of tough to pull evenly. But we are making it work. I'm gonna go ahead and finish splitting our case, and we'll show you guys what it looks like on the inside. As you can see, we used our case splitter. Separate the case halves. There doesn't look like there was any Yama bond in here. Just a very, very, very light coat. Obviously, we're gonna clean up all this gunk that we have in here. Clean up all of our mating surfaces. We're gonna clean all the dirt off of our case halves here. But now we're to the internal workings of the motor. So we have our balancer shaft right here. We have to replace ours. Uh, the threads are destroyed. Uh, we tried to tighten it up and it just blew the threads right off. 